Well, Governor Scott, we're welcome here to today. We're honored to have you address us. We appreciate Secretary Tebbett's work with us on dairy issues, including work with our sustainability team. We appreciate how open your administration has been to working with our CEO on helping attract companies and skilled talent to Vermont. We appreciate your drive to help businesses succeed and create a secure and bright future for all of us. Governor? Thank you. Thank you very much. It really is an honor to be here with you from all across the Northeast. I understand not everyone here is from Vermont, but I'm sure many of you wish you were. Um, <laughs> Uh, Agrimark and uh, Cabot continue to play a critical role in our economy as you approach your 100th anniversary. On my first day as governor, and not that long ago, it seems like a lifetime, but it was about uh, 15 months ago, I issued an executive order uh, outlining the strategic goals of my administration to grow the economy, make Vermont more affordable, and protect the most vulnerable. Three very simple principles which guide us in every policy, every decision we make on a daily basis. For example, while the Federal Tax Cuts and Jobs Act will lower federal taxes for most Vermonters, and admittedly this seems counterintuitive, but due to the complexity of Vermont tax uh, laws and tax system, it's actually going to raise the state income taxes on Vermont taxpayers. So I thought, that's not something we want to do. That doesn't make Vermont more affordable. So my administration introduced a tax reform package to protect Vermont's working families from this $30 million tax increase. So uh, here's the thing. If lawmakers do nothing to rectify this situation, about half of Vermonters, mostly working families with kids, will pay $30 million more in Vermont income taxes, which opens the door for the legislature to spend and collect it every single year. So my plan not only protects Vermonters from this increase, but also achieves additional benefits in the process. It simplifies our system and makes Vermont more competitive with other states through lower tax rates. It's a win-win situation for everyone. So I was encouraged to see the House Ways and Means Committee take this up, but unfortunately, as sometimes the legislature does, they tend to complicate things and they've tied it to another bill that really actually muddies the waters. So I, I hope the House and Senate do the right thing and prevent the Vermonters from seeing higher taxes this year. If you see any of your House, and, uh, uh, House members or Senate members, uh, you might want to pass that along. Working to make Vermont more affordable and, uh, means facing the facts, and that includes a look at our education system. Let me lay out the challenge because I think it's important for everyone to understand why we're in the situation we're in. We have an education system that was built for a much larger student population. 20 years ago, we were educating about 103,000 students. Today, today, just, just 20 years later, it's 76,000, nearly 30,000 fewer than there was that uh, 20 years ago. So, and we're spending a billion seven to do so, to educate them. So think about it this way. If I came to any of you, and I'm sure you'd like this, uh, if I came to you with a check for $1.7 billion and asked you to educate 76,000 students, I dare say it would look much different than it does today. But instead of addressing spending and the inefficiency of our system, the legislature discussion is only focused on how, uh, how to change or how we pay for education. They propose lowering property taxes only to raise income taxes, but have done nothing, nothing to contain costs. So ultimately, it doesn't matter which pocket the money comes from, whether it's a property tax or an income tax, if our dollars aren't spent on an, are spent on an inefficient system uh, that taxpayers can't afford, it doesn't make much sense. So we've got to work together on reforms that contain costs or will continue to face education tax increases year after year. And I can't accept that because I don't believe Vermonters can afford it. So we're also taking steps. I've got a great team with us. Secretary Tebbets is here and uh, Deputy Secretary uh, Eastman is here as well. We're taking uh, steps to help our farmers like you. 
Now, my mom, my mom grew up on a farm in Plainfield, uh, the Cape Farm. And I have many family members who were uh, farmers, uh, so I was raised with the same values that most of you have. Frugality, hard work, innovation, and helping one another in time of need. Those qualities have shaped my life in business and in public service. Vermont's ag economy is part of who we are, our culture, our way of life, and our economy. The positive impact you have on our economy is substantial. Not only is dairy the largest part of the ag sector, but the economic impact of dairy in Vermont is an incredible $2.2 billion annually and helps keep $3 million circulating in Vermont every single day. Finally, our dairy industry accounts for almost 7,000 jobs in Vermont with a total of $360 million in wages. I know these are certainly challenging times for all of you. The price you are receiving for your milk is not near enough. And you are caught in a federal system that needs some help. Until change comes from Washington, we must do whatever we can at the state level. First, in order to make Vermont more affordable, I, as I said before, I'll do everything I can to hold the line on new taxes and new fees. Last year we were successful. For the first time ever, we passed a balanced budget without raising a single tax or fee. And we must do it again this year because Vermonters need a break. At the same time, we are working at every angle to keep more of our farmers engaged. For example, the Vermont Milk Commission met for the first time in six years. I asked them to come up with a series of recommendations that could be considered in the Farm Bill, the Federal Farm Bill, which is up for reauthorization this year. I want to offer my special thanks to AgriMark's Paul Doden for his leadership on this commission. Thanks to their hard work, a handful of the 16 recommendations have already been used. And at the urging of the Milk Commission as well, Senator Leahy was able to revamp the Margin Protection Program. And this insurance program is now available. And although this may not be for all farmers, I would uh, urge you to push the pencil and see if it could help your farm. The Commission also brought attention to truth in advertising. Congressman Welch was able to establish the Dairy Pride Act. It requires the FDA to enforce proper labeling so beverages made from soybeans and nuts can't have the label of milk, which was cutting into uh, the, the uh, sales of milk, as you know. I look forward to continuing to work with our congressional delegation to press for meaningful changes in Washington to help your industry. There's no doubt we're asking you, our farmers, to do more than ever, but you're stepping up. Vermont farmers are working to hard to improve our waterways, whether it's planting cover crops to improve the soil, manure injection, crop rotation, or even going back to school to learn about new technology and better practices. Farmers are doing their part, and that effort is making a difference. Let's look at the facts. Last year, more than 3,100 farmers and other interested parties took more than, uh, than 5,000 hours of education at 93 water quality events. Additionally, 70 Vermonters received advanced certification in manure application. We're also looking at ways to innovate, new ways to help our farmers deal with the challenges of phosphorus. In fact, we're in the midst of what we're calling the Phosphorus Innovation Challenge. It's like Shark Tank where we're looking for new ideas on how to deal with excess phosphorus and turn it into marketable products. This will help our environment, our farmers, and our economy. My thanks go out to uh, Cabot's Jed Davis, who is helping our team with this project. In fact, we'll be announcing these details in the next week in Franklin County. Here's some more facts. Farmers have invested more than $1.5 million of their money and water quality projects. The state of Vermont has also invested more than 17 million just this year. And the federal government spent more than $20 million on water quality in Vermont as well. So thank you all for stepping up. I know you're passionate about your land, water, and the communities you're a part of. As well, I know you're committed to quality. 
I'd like to offer my congratulations to your team at the recent awards at the World Championship Cheese Contest in Madison, Wisconsin. Your three first place awards mean so much to Vermont. And any chance I get to remind Governor Scott Walker about how much better our cheese is than Wisconsin's, and as a reminder to our friends in Quebec about maple syrup, it's about quality, not quantity. That doesn't go over that well in uh, Canada, by the way. <laughs> Winning on the, uh, the, the world stage begins on the farm. You're taking care of your animals, and they're taking care of you. Producing high-quality milk takes commitment, attention to detail, and a lot of hard work. So again, I thank you for having me here today. I hope you have a great meeting. And I look forward to working with you in the very near future. So thank you very much. Speaking of that high quality milk and that award winning cheese, just so happens. Nice. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, next, I'm honored to introduce uh, our chairman of the board, 